What is worth its weight in gold is understanding when you for beauty, okay? All right. If you're shooting fine art and, and involving shadows and other elements and everything else like that, it's it's a little different. You don't have to be so anal retentive, uh, you know, when when you're when you're dealing with facial analysis. But when we're doing beauty headshots, which is my forte, which is what I pride myself on, you have to go into the face, and you have to automatically understand um, uh, what's going on. Uh, everybody has a masculine and a feminine side. Uh, everybody, you know, ha is 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 we're not symmetrical. Uh, everybody is asymmetrical. Okay, there's not. A, if you are symmetrical, you are perfect. And the closest you are to that symmetry, usually. You know, that's where the supermodels come from. The face is sculpted perfectly and everything else, and the ev evenness from, you know, the nose to the cheekbone and everything is sculpted perfectly. And you'll usually find those, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, higher-end models, you know, with, with the perfect face and, and everything else. But even at that, we're not even. If you split the face, we're not even on both sides. We are wider on one side, we are skinnier on one side, we have a bigger eye on one side, we have a smaller eye on the other. Now, how that can play into it um, determines how we light it uh, to the advantage, how we make the uh, picture an illusion of something that it's not. And basically that's what we do when we control light. So the first thing that I do, they come right into the subject's face, and you will never look at another human being uh, the same. As a matter of fact, you will look in the mirror at your own self and you will automatically determine what your masculine side is and what your feminine side is. Yes, men have masculine and feminine side. So what I mean by that, and usually seven times out of ten or something like that, usually the widest point from the uh, tip of the nose to the cheekbone, the widest point on a female especially, is generally the masculine side of the face. So if we were to go in here and look at this side of the face and go in here and look at that side of the face, we're going to start determining what's the widest point of the face. And generally, the thinner side on a female is the feminine side. That's the most attractive side, the most photogenic side. So how, we, how do we determine that is without you know, going up here and measuring you know, like that and looking like a fool uh, you know, in front of your model, we have to visually come right down the center right here like this and just try to measure that and do our best estimate and our best guess on what's the widest point of the subject's face, all right? And so as I look right down the center, it's gotta be kind of a flat lighting situation, all right? And generally, if it's no makeup, that's the best part because makeup can also give an illusion with blush and everything else uh, causing uh, a shadowing effect and causing something for our eyes then uh, to, to be deceived, you know. But now that uh, we need to come in here uh, and do that, I need to look at her and try to determine, look at me straight on, straight on, the, turn this way, and I need to kind of determine what is her masculine and what is her feminine side. Now Cassie is always a hard subject because she's so freaking beautiful on both sides, all right? But I had to determine what is my best way of, 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 of advancing my photo session so I'm not spending a whole bunch of time, so I'm not praying and spraying, or spraying and praying, as we call it, you know. I want to come in. She only has 10 minutes. I have to come in here, and the reason why she's coming to me is I, is I photograph beautiful pictures of everybody. And, uh, you know, and, and, and so somebody comes to me, a client comes to me expecting that result, that so I'm going to take the best possible uh, photograph of them other than anybody else as far as beauty is concerned, all right? So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to automatically measure from the tip of the nose to the cheekbone right here, and from the tip of the nose to the cheekbone right here. And I'm going to determine that's my starting point right there. Now, can you tell me, if, as you look straight down the center, uh, what's the widest side? Is it from, from the tip of the nose to the cheekbone? Is it this side or is it this side? This side over here? Okay, exactly. She seems to be a wider point from here to here than she is from here to here. So I'm automatically going to kind of determine that this is her masculine side. Now I'm going to look at other things. I'm going to look at her jawline, okay, all right? And I'm going to notice that from the center of her lips to the jawline here and to the center of her lips to the jawline over here, once again, I have a wider point from right here than I do right here. 
So that's also going to be another determining factor for me to say that this is her thinnest side and this might very well be her feminine side over here. Okay? So I'm kind of going to go into that and I'm going to look again and I'm then kind of, kind of, I might fake it, I might cheat and I might split and I might do that and I, I can tell based on my experience that she will be most photogenic or her feminine side is her right side. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Okay? So if you can visualize that looking down there automatically, then you automatically know that I need to do something to deceive the picture or to deceive what's going on here by shadow or by hair or something like that. So let me explain that a little bit. So I need you to turn this way just a little. All right. And what I'm going to ultimately do is I'm going to short light the masculine side or what I think is the masculine side. Okay, and if she turns her chin over here to this light right over here, turn your chin that way, just a little bit more, a little bit more, the chin down just a little bit. If I come into this, now we've already determined that this is her masculine side, or this is her bad side, if you will, on a female. Nobody, a female does not want to be masculine looking, right? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to automatically determine that if this is the widest part of her face, I'm going to short light that side, which means I'm going to bring a shadow in to that side of the face. All right? And then I'm going to shoot that. Well, somebody says, well, this is my bad side. This is my bad side. Don't shoot me on this side. Wrong. Because what you'll find is that when you sculpt this with light and shadow, you're going to come, come in and you're going to fake the eye into giving it a symmetrical form. You understand what I'm saying? That the distance between here to here and the distance between here to here are now equal and symmetrical. Science tells us that symmetric, symmetrical is beautiful, is beautiful, right? Okay, it's pleasing, pleasing to the eye. Anything that's symmetrical doesn't throw us off anything. So that's what we're trying to do. Now we can do that with shadow. We can do that with hair. If we part the hair over here and have the bulk of the hair over here, we can kind of come in and sculpt uh, the widest part of the face with hair. We can also make an illusion with a hand. We can also bring the hand up to make it look uh, symmetrical as well, you know, and go from there. So, but what I do and how I attack a subject is to always kind of short light, which means uh, bring the shadow side um, on the masculine side and then also bring that camera forward. And usually almost 100% of the time, your photogenic, your maximum of photogenic uh, on a subject is right here. Because if I was to shadow and, and, uh, and short light, then her feminine side, turn the other way, hon. Turn this way, turn this way, just spin this way. There you go, and then turn, whoops, you got, don't fall off there. All right, turn your chin this way, okay, and then look at me right here like this, okay, all right. If I was to short light, her feminine side, then all I'm doing is shrinking the thinnest side part of her face again. You understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't end up being then as perceived as the most photogenic or the most beauty outcome that you can possibly have. So why shoot 100 pictures from this side? Do you understand what I'm saying? When you could start your photo session from the start just based on your facial analysis from this side. Turn the other way, hon. And come around over here. When you can, when you're doing portraiture or beauty work or anything else like that, chin down and eyes right here like this. Tilt your forehead this way just a little bit. Why? I would want to start there, right? And I would want to shoot ten pictures of this, work on the expression with communication, and be done with the session. She's out the door, and if she's a nurse, she can get back to work. Or if she's a doctor or lawyer or anything else like that, she can get back to work on that very same day. So you're not spending an hour on something and where you're going to have okay results. You might have okay results. Well, we're not about okay results. We're about maximizing uh, the look and the reason why the client came to you to begin with. Everybody wants to be beautiful, right? Nobody wants to be ugly, all right? If you look at Cassie, we can automatically tell that she's a beautiful person, but why would we want to photograph something and make it less attractive than what she possibly could be? Based on the knowledge of understanding um, you know, symmetry and understanding masculine and feminine side, we can then manipulate the perception 
you know, in photography and light and everything else with angles and hand placement and hair, uh, we can then, uh, you know, give it a perceived look that everything is symmetrical again and then thus, you know, portraying beauty as well. Does everybody understand that? Does, ever, does anybody have any questions about that? So when you automatically know the subject has a masculine and feminine side, you might get with your makeup artist and say, put more volume of hair on this side of their face. Okay, that's what you want. That's what, you know, you could possibly uh, give that perceived uh, look as far as being symmetrical by putting the, the hair and hiding part of the masculine side of the face on a female. All right, maybe the hands can come into play. Take your hair back. Maybe the hands can come up as well to the masculine side of the face. Bring your hands up, bring your, bring your hands up right there like that and give a perceived look as far as symmetrical, as far as from this point to this point, you know, making that part symmetrical. Okay, all right. Is there anything else we could do? Okay, what we don't want to do is broad light the masculine side of the face, which a female will tell you the masculine side is obviously their bad side. Bring your hands down, bring your hands down. Okay, if we were to shoot her, look at me right here like this, okay, turn your chin that way just a little bit, and broad light her masculine side of her face, we're really giving more emphasis and broad light meaning that the light is coming in or the part that's closest to the camera axis. Okay, all right. So why would we want to emphasize this? Okay, we realize she's beautiful, but why would we want to emphasize her least attractive part of her face, which is this side over here? Because if you were to take a flat lighting situation, which bring this light straight down in here, and take this face and flip the canvas and bring her in together, she'll look like a boy, I guarantee it. If you take this side of her face and split it and flip it and merge it together, she's gonna look like a pretty darn good looking female. She's gonna look feminine on that, okay, all right? But to look at the overall product here, uh, you know, you could, we're blinded because she's knocked down, drag out, and gorgeous. We all agree to that, right? But when you pinpoint it and you look at it and you want to start understanding, start dissecting the masculine and the feminine side, then we can attack it this way. So if you want to broad light then the feminine side, you're okay with that. You know, if you turn her chin this way just a little bit, all right, and bring your eyes back to the camera over here like this. Let me just get this out of the way, like that right there, all right. If you want to do that, you're going to maximize being most photogenic as well, all right? Broad light the feminine side when you can or short light the masculine side when you can, okay? And play with angles. What if you are in a flat lighting, the J-tent setup? What if you are in the flat lighting situation? Let's just say you are, are straight on light and this is etched in concrete and you can't move that. Let me just lift this up, okay? Your angle, okay, pay attention to that. Now make sure that you light the, the feminine, or not light, but you pose the feminine side forward towards the camera, okay? There's no sense in photographing, go chin that way, photographing the masculine side forward because that's just going to emphasize the masculine side, okay? All right, any questions? All right, that's it. You should not look at people the same ever again from leaving this. It's worth its weight in gold when it comes to automatically just figuring that out and then start your photo session off right so we're not spraying and praying trying to come to it. When you cull through your images on any session, through this one or whatever, that one that stands out, chances are you've nailed that perception, okay, of symmetry. Okay, you know, when you said, oh, that's a really cool shot. Why does this one stand out better than the other ones? Okay, and if you know that and then work with that same subject again, then you automatically know how to kind of do that. When you're outside, it's the, same, it's the same thing. You're playing with angles and you're playing with perception, you're playing with shadows, you're playing with all that stuff to give a perceived look of symmetry. Okay, all right, whether it's lighting ratios, whether it's flat lighting situations, whatever you're doing, you're trying to get everything back 
into a symmetrical form. All right? Okay? It works with everybody. It works with old people, young people, middle people, men, females, what have you. Men I don't care too much about because I want them to look a little more rugged and a little bit more masculine anyway. You know, but if you're doing like a beefcake calendar or a fireman's calendar or something like that, you might want to give it more, more towards the feminine side, more towards the glamour side of men as well. So it's important to know all those things and to understanding what's going on, okay? Uh, thanks for setting in. I hope this benefited you. It should. It's worth its weight in gold alone uh, from, this, from this forward. I mean, you won't look at your aunts and, and sisters and brothers and, and uh, friends the same ever again. You will constantly look at people and you will just start judging them and, you know, it'll play with your mind, seriously. But that's what it is. Light, light's the same way. I cannot walk outside and not see light, you know, light and shadow. It's forever, like, just coming in, like, doo -doo -doo -doo, you know. And uh, so, and this is the way it should be. You should not look at people the same ever again. You should automatically determine that's your masculine side and feminine side. When you, so in, during the holidays, when you're sitting down with the family dinner, look across the table and just without saying anything, try to determine what their masculine and feminine side is or what's the widest part of their face, okay? Now, another thing that's tricky is sometimes that you get the widest part here, okay, all right? But the jaw line over here, you know, is wider down over here. So that kind of that kind of throws it off a little bit. So then you have to play and determine and make sacrifices sometimes about what's going on. Does everybody understand what I just said? So from like the lip down here to the jaw line may be wider on one part, you know. And then so just because I come in here and start here doesn't mean that that's my final decision, you know. It, it, it's all about trying to figure out the angles and everything else. And usually if they're messed up, you know, got a messed up face or something like that, that's when I do try to bring in hands or something like that to kind of minimize that sort of thing. So if, if, I'm, if the jowl is larger over here on this side, sometimes I'll bring a hand up in here just to kind of, you know, diffuse that a little bit. Or bring the hair down, you know, make sure the hair comes on this side too as well. These are little tips and tricks to play into it to kind of give the perceived look that everything is symmetry. Symmetry tells us it's beautiful. Mm -hmm.